high priest in the holy temple of God, you represent God to the people. You're in charge of the priests and Levites in all phases of the worship of God. Do you believe in God? Do, do I what, O king? Do you believe in God? Believe that he actually lives and has being? Well, of course, your majesty. Many people say that they do, but their actions belie their words. To come directly to the point, do you believe, sincerely believe, that the fortunes of Judah, of Israel, of every nation are in direct proportion to their belief in and obedience to God. Well, our nation prospers when we worship and obey God, and we decline when we forsake God. So it is with nations, kindreds, tongues, and people, O king. Thou hast well said, high priest. The cleansing of the temple and its rededication, though done quickly, brought happiness and a fuller sense of the people's duty to God. But it was only a beginning. Yes, your majesty? I am going to reinstitute the feast of the Passover. Oh, be it known unto the king that the Passover feast has been celebrated since the departure of the children of Isaac and Jacob from the land of Egypt. Oh, individually, perhaps, but as a nation and a chosen people, the Passover feast has been entirely forgotten. The division of our people, O king, into two nations after Solomon's reign made the celebration of the Passover seem impracticable. This be but an excuse, high priest. The kingdom of Israel is about to crumble, Jew, according to the word of Isaiah, to surrendering her alliance and faith to the false gods of nations round about and losing sight of the power and might of the God of our fathers and worshiping him not. Thou art a great and mighty king, your majesty, but king only of Judah, not of Israel. An edict to Israel to attend a Passover feast here in Jerusalem would be laughed to scorn, your majesty. I have no intention to order the people of Israel to attend such a feast, merely to invite them to come, if they so wish. Thou art truly a king of God, and he shall surely give thy reign prosperity such as no king has ever known, neither shall be known henceforth. People of Israel, come hither and hearken unto the voice of the king of Judah. Who is that man? I don't know, but he must be some sort of messenger from Judah. What is the king of Judah to do with us? We are Israelites. Let us go closer and hear what his messenger has to say. Then we'll know. Hear ye. Hear ye, ye children of Israel. Turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. All ye that remain free from your lords, the Assyrians, ye are urged to come to Jerusalem to the feast of the Passover and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn from you. If ye will again trust in your God, he will bring thy brethren and thy children from captivity in Assyria. For the Lord is gracious and merciful and long-suffering. Ah, the Passover feast, it's been years. I'm satisfied to continue worshiping right here. Why go all the way to Jerusalem? Well, you don't have to. It was merely an invitation. Oh, Hezekiah must be a good king. Good king? Hezekiah? Ha! He's got a lot of nerve sending messengers here to make requests of us. He's not our king. Would that he were. Then perhaps we'd be strong, whereas now we're a weak nation come to our end. The Assyrians have already invaded our land. They've taken thousands and thousands of our own people as captive slaves. I think we should go to Jerusalem and attend this renewal of the yearly Passover feast. You know, this may be our last chance to save ourselves and our nation from utter ruin. I'll stay here and continue to worship at my own high place and grove. False gods. I'm going to Jerusalem. The response to the king's invitation was entirely different in Judah. Tell the king that we will be at that Passover feast as one man with one heart to do the will of God. Well, so this is the city of David. It's a beautiful city, beautifully situated. But what a shame. Everywhere, on every corner... Begging your pardon, sir, but uh, did I not understand your words? Well, I was merely remarking to myself the condition of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The altars I see on every corner. 
Aren't they made of gold and silver and brass from the vessels of the temple of God? Well, that they are, young man. The wicked king Ahaz uh, had them made from the holy vessels of the temple and placed them on each corner. Oh, but why does King Hezekiah permit such desecration to continue? Well, he's been on the throne but a short time, young man. Uh, give him time and he will rid all Judah of every evidence of heathen worship. Hmm, obviously you love King Hezekiah. Why, of course. He seeks after God to do his will. Under his rule, we are free, happy. You are an Israelite, yet you ask to help rid Jerusalem of Ahaz's idols? Your Grace, as high priest, you must realize that I came here, as did many other Israelites, to worship Jehovah, not to worship idols or false gods. The people of Judah are tearing to pieces those altars of Ahaz so they can truly worship Jehovah at the Passover feast. Give me, therefore, I pray thee, permission to help destroy these altars to the false gods. Permission granted. (laughs) Another false god torn down. Another one gone. And on the 14th day of the second month, the renewal of a united Passover began. But there were many among the great multitude of people who were not sanctified according to the law of Moses, and thus, according to that law, unfit to enter into the Passover feast. But King Hezekiah prayed unto God, saying, O Lord God of heaven, pardon each of these good people who be not sanctified according to thy law. They are here, O God, to seek thy ways and do thy will. And thou, O Lord God of Abraham and Isaac, Thou lookest upon the sincerity of the heart rather than on outward appearance. Purify them, O Lord, and bless them. There was great joy. Since the days of Solomon, the son of David, there was not the like in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. 